Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Saturday the 31st of October. Today we remember Martin Luther who was a reformer in the 1500s. He was born in 1483 at Eiselben in Saxony and educated at the Cathedral School at Magdeburg and in the University of Erfurt. He joined an order of Augustinian hermits there and was ordained priest in 1507 become a lecturer at the University at Wittenberg. He became vicar of his order in 1515 to have in charge of a dozen monasteries. His Christian faith began to take on a new shape with his increasing dissatisfaction with the worship and order of the church. He became convinced that the gospels taught that humanity is saved by faith and not by works, finding support in the writings of St Augustine of Hippo. He refuted the teaching of the letter of James, calling it an epistle of straw. Martin sought to debate the whole matter by posting 95 theses or propositions on the door of the castle church in Wittenberg on this day in the year 1517. The hierarchy chose to see it as a attack on the church, which forced Martin into open rebellion. The Protestant Reformation spread throughout Germany and then Europe, many seeing it as a liberation from a church that held them in fear rather than love. Martin Luther died in 1546, having effected a renaissance in the church, both Protestant and Catholic. So today we remember Martin Luther as a reformer, of one who um, tried to really bring about people believing that they were saved by faith and not by the works we do, and to trust in God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Song of God's praise. O God, you are my God. Thank you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the, of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 147. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Alleluia! How good it is to make music for our God. How joyful to honour him with praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor and casts down the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve our needs. He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength. For the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. 
Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace within your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Alleluia. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Compassionate God. As you know each star you have created, so you know the secrets of every heart. In your loving mercy bring to your table all who are fearful and broken, all who are wounded and needy, that our hungers may be satisfied in the city of your peace, through Christ who is our peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is our continuation from the second book of Kings, chapter 25, verses 22 to the end. He appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahakim, son of Shaphan, as governor over the people who remained in the land of Judah, whom King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had left. Now when all the captains of the forces and their men heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah as their governor, they came with their men to Gedaliah and Mizpah, namely Ishmael, son of Nethana, Johanan, son of Kareah, Sariah, son of Tanhumeth, the Netophathite, and Jazaniah, son of the Machathite. Gedaliah swore to them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid because of the Chaldean officials. Live in the land. Serve the king of Babylon, and it will be well with you. But in the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, son of Elishama, of the royal family, came with ten men. They struck down Gedaliah, so that he died, along with the Judeans and Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. Then all the people, high and low, and the captains of the forces, set out and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. In the thirty-seventh year of the exile of King Jehoiakim of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, King Evil Merodach of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, released King Jehoiakim of Judah from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the other seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put aside his prison clothes. Every day of his life he dined regularly in the king's presence. His allowance, a regular allowance, was given him by the king, portion every day, as long as he lived. Here ends our first reading. Song of Jerusalem, our mother. Thus says our God, I will comfort you, and you shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her. All you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you shall be nursed and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you, you shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Our second reading we continue to hear from the first letter of Timothy, chapter 5, verses 17 to the end. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honour, especially those who labour in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and 
the labourer deserves to be paid. Never accept any accusation against an elder, except on the evidence of two or three witnesses. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all, so that the rest may also stand in fear. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and the elect angels, I warn you to keep these instructions without prejudice, doing nothing on the basis of partiality. Do not ordain anyone hastily, and do not participate in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but take a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. The sins of some people are conspicuous and precede them to judgment, while the sins of others follow them there. So also good works are conspicuous, and even when they are not, they cannot remain hidden. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. So let us pray. So today, as we give thanks for the life and example of Martin Luther, for his work and for his ministry, so we give thanks for his vision, for his trusting in you, Lord, to reform the church, to try to lead people closer to you and deeper in that relationship. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for those who are working hard at this time trying to provide help and comfort to those in need, for those who are places of sanctuary, for those who are places where people can go to get help. We pray for those preparing for worship tomorrow, and we pray for our services at St Peter's, for our services in the morning, for those who will join us virtually and online, in for our All Souls service and for all those that we will remember that, that service. We pray for our world, a world which seems full of problems, challenges and difficulties. We pray especially for the people in Turkey and Greece who have been hit by the recent earthquake, for those who have lost la their lives and their loved ones, for those who've been injured, for those who have lost homes and businesses, for those who are involved in the rescue operation. We pray for those who were killed in France this past week, and for all who are the victims of terrorism and violence. Lord, we pray that with all that the world faces at this time, we would lay aside disagreements and problems. We would lay aside those divisions 
those things which cause people to dislike one another. We pray that they would be laid aside and that people would join together. We pray especially for an end to using religion as an excuse for violence and hatred. God, you are the God of love, the God of peace, the God of reconciliation. And we pray that your gifts would be poured out upon us all today. From our prayer intention, we pray especially for all who are suffering from long COVID and all who are living with long-term symptoms such as tiredness, breathlessness or depression. We pray for medical researchers and all seeking to understand the impact of this virus. We pray for those who feel very anxious and concerned at this time, for what they read in the newspapers, for what they see in the news on the television, for what we hear daily, and for all the anxieties and fears that that brings. We pray for our government and for the leaders of all nations, that when they speak, they speak words of wisdom, not rumour. That when they speak, they know that they have taken good advice, that they are working for the good of all those that they represent, for the people in their care and in their charge. We pray that they would use the gift of discernment in deciding what to do. We pray for them as they have a balance between people's health and the health of the economy and that they would tread the right path forward to keep people safe. So we continue to pray for our key workers, for those who go out to work and those working from home. We pray for those who are concerned as the furlough scheme ends today and for those moving on to the job retention scheme. We pray for those who are struggling in their businesses, for those who are not sure that they will ever be able to be open. We pray for employers who have the task of keeping their employees safe, but also for those employers who have to take the difficult task of making people redundant. There are so many who have lost their employment at this time, and we pray for them today. We continue also to pray for our health service and all those who work in the medical profession, providing healing and care and comfort to all. We pray for our hospitals. We pray, Lord, that they would not become overwhelmed, that they would find the resources that they need to help everyone. We pray for those working in intensive care and for all the pressures and stresses that that brings. For those who are working under very difficult situations, that you would give them your strength today. We pray also, Lord, for those not only on the front line, but those behind the scenes, those who make sure that everything runs smoothly, that they provide for the needs of all. We pray also for our hospices, for our care homes and sheltered accommodation, for those who work out in the community for carers and district nurses. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres. And we pray especially for all those who use their services today. And so we bring to you, Lord, those who are in need of your healing touch, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for Charlie, Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Jeff, Alan, George, Chris, Charlotte, Gillian, Jean, John, Jim, Fred, Elaine, Dave and Susan. Lord, be with them. Bring them comfort and ease in their pain and troubles today. And so we pray for those who have died, especially for those who've died this past night and for those who've been at their side. We pray for those who've died recently 
and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, we ask that you would be with all those who mourn, all those who carry that pain of bereavement, all those who weep today. Wipe away their tears and bring them the hope of the resurrection and eternal life with you. Bless, Lord, you've caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, to read, mark and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of morning prayer today. I have the live a little bit later on as you've had opportunity to watch. I hope that you have a good day. Don't get blown away if you go out in this uh, rather wild and uh, windy weather out there today. There is a service of evening prayer at five o'clock if you're able to join me for that. And tomorrow we have our usual services at 9 o'clock and at 10.30. And our 10.30 service will be live streamed to our Facebook page as usual. In the afternoon at 3 o'clock there will be a, um, our All Souls service, which again will be online on our Facebook page and then uploaded to YouTube if you're able to watch that service. It's a time of remembrance when we give thanks for those who have gone before us. In the meantime, do stay safe, look after yourselves and take care. And you remain, as always, in my prayers.